Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Look at how they've been handling the issue of the patriotic front how they've been sponsoring, you know, individuals to come and basically rob the leadership of the Patriotic Front. Honorable George Sanga, I think now we come to the issue of the Patriotic Front. The recent attacks we've seen uh, from, I think from State House and from the State on the Patriotic Front, yeah. it is now agreed by all stakeholders that yeah. this is an attack on democracy, yeah. this is an attack on the Patriotic Front, and this matter regarding our brother who was suspended at the time, Mao Sampa, is not an internal matter, but uh, appears a sponsored activity against the Patriotic Front. I recognize you are chairperson of um, the legal committee uh, yes. in the Patriotic Front. Yes. Um, without really uh, offending matters in court, because these matters are subject to this, That's please right. just give a background of the cases that are in court, yes. what it is that you are uh, fighting and is there hope to restore the Patriotic Front to its rightful current leadership? That's right. Well, thank you very much. I mean, the first thing we have to recognize is that um, from the time that we lost power, our colleagues in the UPND have engaged in a spirited uh, attempt to destroy the Patriotic Front. And they are using every means available at their disposal to do exactly that. You what see, did they start with? Why, what the, do you mean, the first thing, spirited yes, attack? The, the first thing they did uh, was to challenge all our seats in Parliament with the intention that they could get nullifications. I think they had wrongly thought that because they had taken power, they had taken control at that time of, government, of, of public institutions. So nearly so, all PFMPs, where, council where, chairpersons, mayors were challenged in we court. Were challenged in court. There were more than 256 petitions. Uh, Unprecedented. In, yes, involving councillors, council chairpersons and mayors. There were about 58 petitions involving members of parliament. You know, and when you know, it, became, uh, it came to light that some of the petitions were not going to be successful, mm -hmm. they started dropping a number of them. But the majority of them remained uh, in, in, in court. Our legal team, you know, uh, of course, stood up the challenge, represented members of parliament, and we managed to get most of the seats you know, returned except only two. So these attacks accusing yes. the UPND of trying to create a de facto one-party state started immediately. Immediately. Imagine know, if they had succeeded with all those the, petitions. The, the, the first resolution they passed for themselves that they shouldn't be patriotic front come 2022 December. They, there was only going to be a political party. Wow. And every effort they put in was to ensure that they decimate you, they remove you from existence because they know Mm. The only formidable opposition they've got in this country is the Patriotic Front, mm. for various reasons. Mm. Firstly, the PF is the biggest political party in the country. Mm. People would like to describe, to, to describe it as the biggest opposition party. No, mm. that mm. is just half a description. Mm. We are actually the biggest political party in the country in terms of structures, in terms of membership, in, even in terms of representation in the communities. Mm. So that if, you, if you are in government and you see that this is a threat you have, you then use every means available at your disposal mm. to make sure you destroy that. So that phase ended. Mm -hmm. It was very unsuccessful. Yeah. Because like I but said... But very aggressive. Very aggressive, but very unsuccessful. And partly it resulted in the reduction in the morale of the membership of the Patriotic Fund. I, politics, I remember there were nine seats that um, you lost yes. at... Uh, is it at high court level? At high court level, yes. And uh, the Speaker proceeded to declare those seats vacant and remove the MPs yes. in, in, in Parliament. That also opened us up to a realisation mm. that this was a connivance you mm -hmm. know, between the UPND in government and the presiding officers at Parliament because the Speaker went against existing precedent. 
yeah. which says if a member of parliament is being challenged you know, in, in court, his seat is being challenged for notification via petition, as long as the matter has not been resolved by the constitutional court, mm -hmm. finally, mm -hmm. that MP must retain the seat at Mandahill. Mm -hmm. And he must remain in parliament or she must remain in parliament and participate in the processes. Mm -hmm. But the speaker against that existing president, and the speaker being a renowned lawyer herself, mm -hmm. decided to pass a blind eye to the existing president and, and kicked those uh, members of parliament out of parliament. One time during vice president's question, mm -hmm. the vice president you know, even cheered up the speaker Mm. for having made such a decision. Oh, my. I challenged myself. I said, yeah. look, I am a lawyer, mm. and I've got faith in the judicial system in the country. But mm. also I know that what has happened is wrong. But I assured the vice president that our colleagues who have been unceremoniously kicked out of parliament will come back mm. because mm. The, the evidence that we have examined shows clearly that those notifications were actually not justified. Mm. And mm. true to what I predicted, those people came back except mm. yeah. the two. Yeah. You know, Honorable Malangi and Honorable Lusambo. Mm -hmm. So that project, as aggressive as it was, it, it, it wasn't successful. PF still remained intact, and we continued providing checks and balances. Your brother, <coughs> John Sangwa, says we've seen ruling parties steal resources, steal money, yes. but it's the first time that we've seen a, you know, a ruling party steal Stealing seats. Leadership, yes. So the issue of <laughs> Honorable Malangi and Boma Lusambo, right. just yeah. speak to that briefly, because I think that was a test yeah. to what, a, what is currently happening. It was basically a theft of those seats, but let me tell you what I have always said. I have pay, I've paid growing tribute to our legal team mm. that represented us under the most difficulty of circumstances. Yeah. And we got to a stage where a message has been delivered. Right now, the Constitutional Court is sitting. You know, the Malangi and the Lusambo case is not, nobody should be getting excited that it's finished. Yeah. It's still ongoing business. Mm. There's a matter before the Constitutional Court where our lawyers are simply asking them to repeat what they had said earlier on. Because they themselves had made a decision that these individuals were eligible to stand. And but they were unfairly excluded, of course, they were unconstitutionally yeah. excluded. By, by connivance between the ECZ and State House. Mm -hmm. Because if you notice what was happening during the period, is that even when the matters were in court, the president found himself going to, you know, uh, to the constituencies he engaged every, every in week. a ten-day campaign. Yes, every week he was there. One time he declared a ten-day campaign period on the Copper Belt, mm -hmm. even when the matters were in court. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, 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 our lawyers raised all these issues before the court. But what was exciting is that that court at that time found that those people were not prevented from participating in the election. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. ECZ, like we said, has managed to put them out, out of the ballot box, mm -hmm. ballot paper. They didn't participate. That matter is in court. I don't know what the Constitutional Court is going to say. Mm -hmm. I have the expectation, mm -hmm. you know, that courts are, are, are guided by what is called established judicial precedent. Mm -hmm. The court has already pronounced itself on this matter. Mm -hmm. The most they're going to try and do is repeat what they had said. And if that there's, there's the an case, absurd mm -hmm. case against um, Zambia six president, yes. where various petitioners have gone to court and they want to uh, challenge the constitutional court by yeah. alleging that uh, a former president Ed Galungo was not eligible to stand in 2021. Yet there's been, so, yeah. I think, two pronouncements yes, by the there's constitutional been court. So much controversy surrounding that case, you know, and most of it, quite frankly, is political, mm -hmm. and most of it, unfortunately, is mm -hmm. ethnic. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, sometimes we need to get to a stage as a nation where yeah. we begin to address the vices that we are faced, mm -hmm. you know, head on, and establish what are we trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Courts are supposed to help us achieve what is called social order. Mm -hmm. When courts make pronouncements, mm -hmm. our responsibility is to actually respect those pronouncements. So are they part of national building? Are they part of <laughs> keeping peace in this they country? Are now at, uh, they are the, we are going through a litmus test mm -hmm. of whether our courts are really part of uh, a national building and national unity mm. because you see their responsibility is one of habitats. Mm. It is expected in a multi-party political system that we're going to have differences mm. in terms of you know, interpretation of the law, in terms of interpretation of the constitution. I appeared before a select committee before I became a member of parliament when I was president of LAS mm. and I reminded members of parliament yeah. that we are about to pass a constitution mm. that will create a class of very few individuals who will be telling us what is democratically constitutional or what is not. When we were appointing those judges in the Constitutional Court, I was telling the members of Parliament, yeah. we are now surrendering our sovereignty to, to those the Constitutional nine. Court. Yes. They are the ones who are going to be there. And I told them, let's pick individuals of impeccable reputation, yeah. of impeccable character, because this responsibility is going to be an interpretation of this document we say is our constitution. Mm. You know, of course, the judges were appointed, and as a lawyer and as a citizen, I have a responsibility of 
according due respect to these judges. Mm. Whether or not they're going to discharge that function remains for the court of public opinion to interpret. Yeah, but the, the trouble case, with that court is <clears throat> the court of first and last appearance. Yes. In most cases. And it, and it should be so, except that with now the development of jurisprudence elsewhere, they have been made subject to an appeal process in other countries. Mm. And I think the idea is being mooted even here, that mm. maybe it must be done. But look, let's deal with what we exist with, what no. we have right now. Let, what I believe myself is that every human being has got what is called a spiritual determination. Mm. You know, if I say, Mr. Mamba, you are now the judge of the court, you begin to, you immediately have to remind yourself, what am I accountable to? Mm. And if you want mm. to understand your level of accountability, read the document by which you have been elected. It's mm. not the first time we are having a court that has to make decisions that are so controversial mm. because we are developing our new you know, constitutional jurisprudence. Mm. In America, you know, there's a very celebrated case of uh, uh, Marbury and Madison. I think mm. uh, lawyers understand that. Where judges who were appointed by commissions exercising the powers of a president mm. challenged their, appoint their own appointment and made a finding in court that we are the ones who benefited from these commissions of appointing us as federal Supreme Courts and mm. judges, but the commissions were unconstitutionally exercised. <laughs> so they actually <laughs> fired themselves. Yeah, so, but but yeah. the, the quest is they wanted to test the Constitution. Mm. So for me, these judges must just read the Constitution, find out what is their responsibility under the Constitution regarding the cases that have come to court. Mm. There are several cases that have come before them now. Yeah, speak to the, <clears throat> briefly to the issues of mouths, where you suspect yeah, the illegalities are, and where the party is, for, for and me, in relation to our democracy. For me, you know, you can't divorce uh, discussing miles from politics, but I'm mm. trying to uh, discuss it from, from a strict legal perspective. Mm. You see, we have argued, and our laws have taken these cases to court, with a this, with this principal argument that under the PF Constitution, just like under any other political party's constitution, including yeah. the UPND Constitution, mm. there are laid down procedures. There are yardsticks that are laid down. Mm. You know, there are certain thresholds that are laid down within the constitutional framework of that political party, called mm. Patriotic Front, that everybody has to comply with for you to have what is called an effective and successful convention. Mm -hmm. The, uh, you know, structures where there, there's maximum participation at, mo at all senior levels in the political party. Members mm. of parliament must be part of a convention. Members of Central Committee must be part of convention. There's what is called a National Council, mm. which is basically the sieve for that institution and for that process. And that National Council is provided for in the Constitution. Mm. So what our lawyers have simply said, look, let's examine what went to, you know, to Miles Sampas Convention mm. to establish whether the threshold that is provided for in the Constitution was met. Mm. And that is important because it is only when you prove that, that when you want to now go and register the so-called office bearers, the Registrar of Society will gauge what you did against yeah, what is contained in the Constitution. Mm. And that document is sitting with her. Mm. Those are the powers that are vested uh, in, in, in our office by the Registrar of Society's Act mm. or the Society's Act. Unfortunately, this issue is what the court is vacillating in dealing with. In my assessment, this is a very simple issue that, quite frankly, a judge who is sufficiently experienced, properly qualified, mm. and one who applies the law and nothing else should have dealt with within a period of not more than 90 days. In November, okay. the Zambia con uh, 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 Conference of Catholic Bishops yes. uh, issued what they call a pastoral letter. This is a rare letter. That I think they issue maybe three, four times a That's year. That's right, yes. And among the issues they raised was the shrinking democratic space. Yes. And the case of the Patriotic Front was very prominent. Yes. And they made a special appeal yes. to the Chief Justice yes. to ensure that where disputes uh, are in political parties that even threaten, yes. uh, uh, you know, democracy. Yes. Those disputes must be resolved and resolved quickly. Expeditiously. Other stakeholders, OSIDA, yes. uh, you know, and other church leadership and other stakeholders, yes. they've also called on the judiciary and the yes. chief justice yes. to ensure that is responsive to this national crisis mm -hmm. we have. It's no longer deemed as a PF crisis. That's right. You know, in Bemba we say, Apakumaira Ngondo. Mm -hmm. you know, when stakeholders begin to raise issues mm -hmm. concerning the delivery of justice, it simply means there's a big problem. You see, in fact, if you, if you saw the pastoral letter, yeah. there was even an, a suggestion in the pastoral letter that they had expected that the chief justice, who has powers to, to sit as a puny judge, mm -hmm. should have possibly considered taking up that matter and coming to the High Court and calling the, the lawyer and say, look, I'm going to hear this case as a puny judge. Why? Because we needed to create a standard. Mm -hmm. There are problems with what transpired at Miles Sampa's 
you know, conference. Uh, conference, which if allowed to become part of our legal system, is going to create chaos. Mm. So that challenge was big enough for the Chief Justice to be able to sit, to get up from, for, get off from his seat as Chief Justice and come and sit as a puny judge. Mm. So that we could have a proper interpretation of how should a political party follow its constitutional provisions mm. when it comes to hosting and holding a, a, a national conference. I was the first one to make that call to the Chief Justice mm. earlier on mm. because mm. I noticed and, 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 this and, 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 and this is not to spite the judge who was mm. in this case. My personal assessment as a lawyer of 30 years standing it was that this case is too big for that judge. Mm. It is only that people don't pay attention to the real issues. It mm. is too big because there is what looks like influence from elsewhere mm. on that, that case. There's a dark cloud mm. you know, hovering around that case. Mm. And that judge, having just freshly been appointed, mm. in my assessment, should not have been given that case in the first place. Mm. And if the Chief Justice recognizes this as a problem, mm. he should have decided himself exercising the constitutional powers that he's got to come and sit as a, as a, as a, chief, as a, as a judge as a judge of high court. In fact, if you, in, the, in the recent past, mm. the chief mm. justice recognizes this problem mm. because there was a story, I think I was out of town when I read in the press, that he had called a meeting of judges mm. to come mm. and discuss why the patriotic front cases are delaying now. That yeah. shows you that how problematic this issue has become. Mm. And in my assessment, I the, think... The UPND yes. have been very adamant that this is an internal problem. The PF, you the PF, have accused uh, literally State House and the State as orchestrating this process against the Patriotic Front. Just speak to that. Why do you make those strong allegations? You know, first I made a comment once. I said, look, it's only a small child of seven years who, if he walks out of a bedroom with sugar on his mouth, and you ask him, no, the sugar. And <laughs> you, you say, say no. <laughs> but you can actually see that he's got sugar on his mouth. You know? Yeah, look, yeah. <clears throat> If they have sugar on their mouth. Oh, the genesis mm. of this thing was what the president said. You know, mm. He himself declared that mm. you know, like, like he's, he's designed a scheme mm. which becomes dangerous if the first stage does not succeed. Yeah. So the first stage did not succeed. Well, Petitions did not succeed. You know, and then and the well, things, well, not allow it. it didn't work. Yes, mm. rest of our senior leaders in the party has yet not, is yet to succeed or if it is going to succeed because now what you've seen is it's like now they arrest you mm -hmm. okay then they create offenses mm -hmm. okay and then they create courts and mm -hmm. then they bring you to the court yeah. now this, this, a process, this process. process is very strange mm -hmm. it's never been heard of anywhere mm -hmm. that you arrest people and you create now properly structured courts that come to come to deal with those people mm -hmm. what is happening to the presumption of innocence what is happening to the need assorted. for you to prove the case beyond reasonable doubt in accordance with the golden rules that we've been applying for over a hundred years? Mm. What is so special about the patriotic front? But this tells you that these are, these are all schemes mm. intended to ensure that by the by, by a set period in the stages of Mingarato, mm. this political party ceases to exist. Mm. So now we are at a stage where they are using one of our own, mm. our Keith and Kin, mm. to design him as an alternative you know, leadership within the patriotic front. They actually help him to stage a coup d'etat mm. against an existing political party. Mm. But I've said this, I have the confidence of the fact that PF is a strong you know, organization. Mm. It is just an, it's not an ordinary political party. This mm. is a living organism. This thing has transitions. Mm. But also the agenda of the PF is yeah. an agenda that Zambians will forever assimilate to. You know, a political party that says we want to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor mm. has the poor as its friends. Mm. And the poor are in the majority in the nation. Mm. So if you are mm. going to toil with a political party like this one, you are actually... You, Delineating yourself from the, yes, from the poor. So there's no, whatever they're going to put in place is going, not going to work. But coming to the court cases that are, you know, before the court, yeah. the only thing our lawyers have been asking is for the court to determine whether what transpired at my, at, uh, at my Sampa's you know, retreat. Was legal is, is legitimate. anything akin to a constitutional, you know, convention of the patriotic front? Mm -hmm. And if it is found that it was not, then it means whatever they have put in place has not worked. Now, for me, we need to address ourselves to the crisis that the failure by the court to determine this matter has resulted in. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, just this morning, I got a phone call from Monibu Kapianga, mm -hmm. who has said that the tribunal that was sitting in Impika to consider the petition on the nomination for the, for the council uh, by-election has found that the ECZ faltered Mm. in how mm. it refused the patriotic front from participating mm. in the election. Now, this is an offshoot mm. of the fact that the case, the case in court has so delayed because now another tribunal has been to think, oh, wait a minute, this Miles Sampa camp mm. has not been confirmed or dismissed by the mm. court. Mm. The, the, the Nakashinda case mm. 
mm. the national camp are the ones who are still, according to the owners of the party, considered legitimate leaders. Mm. Okay, mm. The, the change of office bearers was as controversial, has also been contested. As, as controversial as anybody can be, and that matter is before the court. So this tribunal not find itself lumbered with mm. the responsibility of determining how do we then determine this? Who the, who the legitimate mm. owners of this political party is, and also mm. what, what, what standards did ECZ utilize mm. to accept that, you know, Mao Sampa's SG is legitimate and dismiss. Now, these are the chaos that you create mm. by delaying a case that is so requiring of mm. agent attender, mm. attention. Our lawyers certify these cases as agent. You know, mm. for me, we, we, have, we, we, are, we, are, we are having a process where public institutions are mm. either being polarized or are deliberately hiring themselves up to a ruling party mm. to be able to decimate one political party without looking at the ramification mm. or the results of the decisions they're going to be making. Mm. Look, they may, they may succeed in preventing mm. me from contesting an election. Yeah. But what, mm. have they, what have they done? They have taken away the right of the people in Lukasha mm. who think that me... Who should have who, their own choice. I don't do this for myself. No. I am a member of parliament in Lukasha because people need representation and they are the ones who make a choice. Mm. But the structure is such that the, the, the platform must be laid out in such a, a very objective and independent manner that people are not going to be thinking, you know, I, I was making a comparison that it's like Paul Adana was wants to play with Nkana Red Devils. Huh? Mm. But when, before the death of the game comes, the Nkana coach begins to say, okay, Muriwa Paul Adana is Munafu Nyama Wa Mwamba, Wakisangata Mwabemo, Muriwa Mwamba Zulu, Nama Banda Yawala. What kind yeah. of game are you mm -hmm. going to create? Mm. Yeah. But, but look, we are we are transforming from a respected, you know, emerging democracy in Africa mm. to one that is going to be, you know, vilified genuinely by other Africans. If, if, we, if, we, we, if previous presidents, including President Lungu, had done what uh, uh, President um, Hakainde Ichilema has done, would President Hakainde Ichilema have won the 2021 would, election? You would not have made it. Would we be called the democracy? We would, that is the time we would have closed you know, the door to a democratic process that we put in place mm. in 1991. But mm. look, these other presidents were not foolish to have allowed a flourishing democracy to have taken place. Mm. You see, the UPND, in my assessment, is, is, has chosen the path of a de facto one-party no state system. They know, look, they can't be contending with citizens first now. Mm. Because they are much bigger political party than citizens face. Mm. The only party they are, they are targeting at decimating is Patriotic Front for the mm. simple reason that they know that if they contended with Patriotic Front as we are currently constituted in 2026, they, will not, they cannot beat us mm. at the poll. But look, the, the sad thing is that this compromisation or compromising of state institutions is not only with the courts. Mm -hmm. It is with mm -hmm. every, other, every other institution. Yeah. The yeah. ECZ as it is currently. Look, look you at can't the, run a free look and at the fair decisions, election. Look at the decisions they are making you know, about who should, who, should, who, who should sign an adoption certificate. Mm -hmm. It has never been heard of mm -hmm. that the ECZ lays a standard on who in the political party should, should be the sign. appropriate person to it's sign. Not their you leave it to the patriotic mm. the party itself. Let them make it, because they elect their leaders. They mm. choose their leaders. Mm. You see, but also, when the public has been given a clear view of what is happening between the State House and Mao Sampa's presidency, mm. The police, mm. the, the, the parliament, and society. parliament is, it, it is clearly showing that mm. these political parties... The meeting of minds is criminal. Yeah, the, 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 you mm. know, the, the consonance of how they are thinking mm. is actually a criminal industry. Mm. And mm. worse still, they are trying to protect that criminality. Mm. You see, mm. between Mrs. Muhende and this new register of societies, Mrs. Muhende did the right thing. Yeah. They mm. removed her and put in a person and ask them to do something wrong. Mm. And that person mm. did something yeah. wrong. Yeah. You know, if you look at uh, Parliament, the, the, the Mao Sampa's so-called retreat mm. is the subject of court proceedings. Mm. Mm. Under the existing you know, jurisprudence or even the practice of Parliament, when a matter is before the court, the speaker does not do anything. Yeah. In fact, I don't know whether it was now out of shame or out of uh, uh, you know, fear of being caught napping. Mm. When it came to deal with the nine members of parliament who were unfortunately so-called expelled from the patriotic fight. Yeah, yeah. We got a statement, not even from the speaker, but I think from the clerk of the, of the parliament, that uh, look, because this case is in court, you know, we can't, we can't do, do anything. anything. So mm. how then do you deal, how do you then justify 
how you accepted that Ingona. The changes can take place. change, you mm. know, the leader of opposition. Mm. That thing on can and before you know we, we had been able to deal with the matter before we even go back to parliament there was another another letter mm. saying honorable Cassandra had been removed and replaced I think with honorable Daka and you even effect <laughs> that yeah <laughs> and this is after you had yourselves made a comment that the matter we've involving the nine MPs is in you know, so mm. you can see that we have reduced politics from a, program, from a program of national governors mm. to child's play, mm. a Sunday mm. school picnic looks much better than the politics <laughs> are doing in this nation. So we need to get to a stage mm. where, like Robin Lufuka said today, we identify men and women of character, mm. men and women of integrity, and entice them to come back to the center stage of politics mm. so that we can drive this country forward. Because mm. look, what we are doing now, we're not even going around the circles. Mm. We are actually regressing. Yeah, into a yeah, dark hole. Yeah. The sooner we become worse than the colonial government was in this yeah, yeah. Honorable George Sanga, as we wind up um, our conversation, uh, what are the prospects for 2024? There seems to be very dim looking at 2023. The economic sector, I, I, I think, was floundering. Yes. Social sector, the crisis we have with high cost of living, yes. and uh, our dear brothers appear to be failing in every sector, whether it's agriculture, whatever sector you pick, mining, the, yeah. we are in a crisis. Where do you see us in 2024? We have already painted a very bad picture, a dark picture for 2024. Because, look, the problem that we have with the UPND is that they're not matching their words with their actions. Mm. Whatever they say and what is happening are two different things. Mm. They are only in offices, these individuals, because of the magnanimity of Zambians. Mm. And see, I think the, the population also is tired. Mm. You know, we've, had, we've been doing too much politics. The, mm. the UPND put us under so much pressure as a political party that was in government. Mm. To an extent where when we voted, when they were voted into power and were voted out of power, people thought, okay, we've done what we need to do. Let's give these people an individual uh, yeah. a chance. But the, even when they're beginning to fail, some of them are still scratching their heads. What next? Mm. But like I said, we've painted a very bad picture, you know, for the future, for 2024, purely because... We, we've been fettered to so many lies by this mm. political party. Look at mm. how they're dealing with mining, for instance. Mm. At one moment, we are told, oh, we've got a deal with KCM. Mm. And the next moment, we're told, oh, the deal is still oral. Mm. We haven't put it in writing. Mopani comes in, they do a deal that clearly shows that you see, they've, they've doubled the price at which they're selling their stake to this investor. Mm. To an extent where, instead of being given sufficient money for the investor to come into Mopani, it is like, you know, I have, I have half a, a, a loaf of bread. Mm. Before I give it to you, I even mm. go and collect another half from my neighbor and tell you, you know, say, I mean, <laughs> you, Mopani, can, be, you can begin to cooperate. So I don't even think mm. that these mining companies are going to invest anything in the next, you know, in the next 12, 12 months. It's not going to happen. What should political parties do? What should Zambians I do? I think Zambians must take control, you know, of their economy. For mm. me, that is what is important. Look, you may have... People were trying to laugh at what Edgar Lungu tried to do in the, in the, towards the end of our tenure mm. by taking the mines and putting them under the control of the government. Mm. That is a very brave and decisive step that they had taken. Mm. In fact, it is what they are pretending to do with, with Mopani, if you have seen. Mm. They, they are mm. pretending that... So that know, we have some sufficient we're only, ownership. Yeah, we're only giving them... When it was 100% owned. We, we actually, yes, for us, we owned it, all of it. Mm. For me, we should have used Mopani as our own baby. Mm. Build capacity within Mopani before inviting an investor to come back and invest. Mm. You see, they always want to argue that no, mining investment is very expensive. Why are we the only ones who are arguing like that? Mm. Tanzania and the graphite mines, they're only giving investors 49%. Yeah. Botswana, in their diamond mines, they have now resolved. They're only giving the Botswana you know, uh, 49%. In fact, yeah. I think for the, they're taking a much bigger stake themselves. 51% and then they've yeah. assumed marketing Absolutely. rights. Absolutely. If mm. you look at the principle of shared value, which is being, you know, employed by Venezuela and Mexico and mm. other Latin American countries, that's a, only, that's a way to go in mining investments. But see, because we've got professionals in privatization, the only thing they know frankly, is, to is how to hand over <laughs> <laughs> you know, to the others. So it, it, it paints a very gloomy picture. Mm. And if you go to agriculture, it's even a sad, mm. you know, tale, because mm. I am a member of parliament and for a, for, for a rural constituency, I have argued this: that rural communities do only depend on the on the, on the government with one shot. Mm. Give mm. them fertilizer, give them seed, walk away. Mm. They will produce their food. Mm. They will they will and feed the themselves. Food they will even, yes, they will go and they'll have something to sell. Help you. Mm. FISIP has lamentably failed, mm. and it is, in my view, it is lack of intelligence. It's mm. lack of wisdom to see FISIP failing. And then you begin to say, oh, we're going to introduce something called the cons consolidated agriculture or something. Mm. I don't even know what they call this program. Mm. Yeah. When they begin to describe it, 
Mm. You know, even somebody who's eligible. They can't even describe it. They're introducing loans, who's eligible, how the repayment periods will be done. It. So for, it's literally they're abandoning the sector. This opens a very dark picture of mm. where we're going, you mm. know, forward. But people have even started now asking them, gentlemen, why don't you ask for help from the patriotic front? Mm. If you heard somebody was on TV saying, why can't myself just call, you hey, know, Dr. Chitalo 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 this is, look, Managing, mm. managing cholera mm. is supposed to be a four-week window. Mm. Within four weeks, you must know. Shut it down. The, 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 the interventions you have done mm. you must, must bring you results. Mm. Look at the numbers now. Yeah. They are on the increase, even mm. with interventions. But the interventions that we are seeing are not even meaningful in my mm. assessment. What, mm. are, what, what are these interventions? People are now saying that if you, if, you, if, you, if you throw up and you purge at UTS, they will take you to cholera. Mm. And then they discover that you're not actually a cholera patient. You might actually they, pick the cholera from, from there. there. Yes, but, but there's no water and if, the facilities if, are, if, have not been and, very and, and the president is asked a very simple question. Sir, people are saying there's no water here. Yeah. You saw the answer that he provided. He, you, you he said you are black members as opposition you and you are witches. You don't <laughs> win by doing that thing. For me, the president should now call a stakeholder you know, a multifaceted stockholder engagement in mm. fighting against cholera. There yeah. are people who are well versed than the president. Mm. There are actually people who are well versed than the Minister of, Agric of, mm. of, of Health in mm. fighting cholera. Mm. But if all these are going to be ignored, mm. this thing is going to, it's a bombshell. Mm. It, it mm. has not even exploded. Look, we are failing to manage it in the epicenter, which is the headquarters of the nation, mm. which is the capital city of the nation. What will happen if this cholera spreads to northern province? No, by the way, you have a cholera outbreak in western provinces. You, we have COVID yes. outbreak, COVID is, 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 is on the all, as well. Yes. We have anthrax yes. outbreak. Yes. Then we have dysentery um, also outbreak. Uh, you have uh, uh, in, in agriculture sector, yes. army worms yes. and the black beetle. Yes. It's like you're reading the Bible and, and about that, end times. And brown strike <laughs> in northern province for the yes. cassava. Yes, yes, and then we have that disease that has affected yes. cassava. Yes. You, you are reading like end time. End time, yes. But, but, but for, that's, a lack, that's a poor management. We lack a Joseph. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we lack a Joseph. You know, I agree we, with we lack somebody who can think outside mm. the box on how we can be food secure. Mm. And in my assessment, in, in, modern, in modern leadership, you know you can even engage with your enemy yeah. if you have to find a common, common solution True. to a bigger problem. Mm. We have a big problem here that nobody should afford to politics. But see, when all people have been turned into disciples of a president, mm. you know, when you write to the town clerk and tell her, look, we, we, we tell him we would like to help you to they fight for it. Then they write to you and tell you, oh, no, 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 you see, after all, you're not even the Secretary General. Of the, mm. But it tells you that we are not, we don't have a common agenda mm. in solving a common problem. Mm. And, the, and, you know, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King once time said we, we should reason together as brothers or perish together as idiots. Yeah. At the end of the day, we are going to, towards a stage where if we don't reason together... Repeat that. He says we should reason together as brothers yes. or perish together as idiots. Oh, yeah. you know, so <laughs> On that note, we end. Should we survive as brothers or perish as idiots? We need to survive as brothers yeah, at yeah. all costs. What, by all means necessary. Yeah, Honorable George Sang, a member of parliament for Lukasha in Kasama, member of the Central Committee for the Patriotic Front and chair of the Legal Committee um, of the party, and a seasoned lawyer, renowned lawyer of many years. This was a great conversation. I thank you, and I thank you for participating in our conversation. I'm also grateful you gave me an opportunity to excel. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, grateful, thank you. Thank Good day. Until we have another guest, see you. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Savage. All right, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.